rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 12th of March, 2008, approximately 10:15 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Henry W. Miller. My place of birth is Albany, New York, 311-24. All right. And um, do you, what was your educational background prior to entering service? Well, I went to uh, eight years of St. James School in Albany, and I went to Christian Brothers Academy and graduated in 1943. Okay. Now, did you uh, enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. Okay. Um, could you tell me where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was in school. Just we heard about, about uh, I was going to school then. And in 1942, I got my draft notice as a senior in school. They want to take me out of school, but let me finish school. I finished school in 1940, July, June of 43. July 3rd of 43, I was Got my Navy orders, and July 10th of 43, I was up in Sampson. So you went to Sampson. What was Sampson like at that time when you went there? Well, it was, it was uh, in the process of expanding. I was in Unit E, and we had put in storm sewers for it, part of our training. <laughs> that was it. Mm -hmm. So the barracks were, most of them were built by that time? They were building a lot then, mm -hmm. yes, they mm -hmm. were. What kind of training did you have at Samson? What did you do? Well, they gave you the calisthenics and marching around and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But after Samson, I was back to Samson after a quick leave, and they got us in there one day and said, well, you're already been assigned to a ship. You're going to the storage school. Now, how long were you in Samson? Uh, to August. Okay. Because August 15th, I was assigned to the Wadley. I went down to the storage school in Norfolk, Virginia. <clears throat> now, you went to a school before you went on board ship? or? They went to the storage school. They showed okay. you different things, uh, what they expect in the construction of a ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then right then there I was assigned to a gun crew. How long was that school? Same time it was all there. It was uh, August, September, and we got back in first part of October to Boston, and the ship was christened. I think October twenty fourth. Oh, so you were a plank holder then? Huh? Were you a plank holder? A plank holder. Yes, I'm a plank holder. Okay. Yeah, I'm a plank owner, they say. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you, so this is a brand new ship, um, you were assigned to a gun crew. What kind of gun crew? The five inch five gun. Five inch, okay. A hot casement. Mm -hmm. Which one was it? Four turrets or? Uh, the gun three is a middle gun. Middle? It's, uh, it's uh, midships. One and two is in the bow. Three is in midships. And four and five is towards the stern. Three, number three gun is the illuminating gun, as they call it, on board ship. What does that mean? Well, at night fire, you fire the shells out and it gets back. Oh, okay. Like a light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a flare. I got a flare, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, the guys okay. are dropping flare. Okay. Um, what did you do inside the turret? I was a hot casement. What does that mean? Hot casement, when the gun is fired, you end the gun mount you have. The pointer, the trainer, and uh, two men to load the, the uh, ammunition. And the hot cable stands behind the gun, and the gun cap is up on top. So when the hot shell comes out, you're going to I gotta catch it with a gun and throw it out the back. Okay. Now, did you wear gloves or yeah, anything? Gloves. Gloves mm -hmm. up there. Up to your elbows. Up to your elbows. And you had to catch them. Mm -hmm. And you had to go watch one to roll the ship. You had to go with the ship. Sometimes you miss them and kick them up with your feet. Now, did you throw them overboard, or what did you do no, with them? No, well, they had a, we put them back in cases, and they salvaged them. Okay. So you threw it out the, the door of the... The, the bottom. The the bottom. Oh, out the bottom of the turret, and someone yeah. else put them in a... And they just rolled there until the... And flipped all over with them. Oh, okay. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, once you got on the ship, you, you must have taken a shakedown cruise. Shakedown cruise down to Bermuda. And it was a beautiful shakedown cruise. And on the way back, there's something that no person will ever have. We were called from going, instead of coming back to Virginia, we were called out to the Mid Atlantic to pick up FDR on the Iowa and oh. escort him back to the United States. Oh. Last trip to Casablanca. Mm -hmm. We pulled in uh, Norfolk and that was it. Did you uh, get to see him or speak no, to him? I didn't at all? See, no. <laughs> We hit a terrific storm, and I think we were somewhere over in submarine duty. <laughs> it was rough, yeah. very, very bad. One of those things. Now, when you went to the Pacific, where, where do you think the worst storms were? You had one in the Atlantic. I had one in the Pacific. It was a typhoon. Okay, off Okinawa. No, was it or? around? Uh, I don't know what part of the Pacific it was. Uh, mm -hmm. It was. Near Pelly, though, this side, way to this side of Pelly, near the Marianas. Mm -hmm. We hit a beaut. Still scared of the storms yet, believe it or not. Okay. Was the ship listing really bad? Well, we, uh, 45 degree roll, they say you're, you're at, we had a 44 degree roll. Uh huh. Like that. 45 you went over. The 44 we were, and just bounced up, thank God. How much damage did you have to the ship? None. None? Okay. One of those things, but none. Okay. Well, let's go back. After your shakedown cruise and your escorting of Roosevelt, what, what did you do from there? Well, we came back and uh, we regrouped and we got assigned to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And we went through the ditch. We hit the uh, West uh, Pacific around January 1st, 2nd. Of what year was that? 44. And then we went to Hawaii. It's the first time I've ever seen it. It was horrible. Oh, you mean Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, yeah. Mm -hmm. It still was pretty bad there? Pretty bad, yeah. The ships were there, and yet the smell was horrible. Oh, jeez. What was it, an oil smell? or Oil smell and uh, like a dirty smell, like nothing had been taken care of. A lot of ships were still on our side yet. Mm -hmm. Horrible. And Waikiki Beach was beautiful, and so was Diamond Head. There was no hotels on that then. It was yeah. in the ordinary land. It was beautiful. How long were you in Hawaii? Oh, about uh, four days, about three days. Mm -hmm. Then we escorted an ammunition ship down across the equator. So you must have had a little ceremony then, or did you cross the equator? We we crossed the equator way way down. Okay, what we had a ceremony. Time? Yes, we did. Now, well, wait a minute. Trying to help one, excuse me, gentlemen. Being so smart ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. Let's see. Right, Hawaii. January 1944, we crossed it. Then to give the date. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have done anything like that. So, so that's your shellback card. Shellback card and uh, the Order of Golden Dragon. What was that? <laughs> well, uh, I've crossed one heading to Meridian on the USS Wiley during World War II. And I've been initiated then and there onto the Oriental Mysteries of the Honorable Ancestors of the Golden Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you turn that around and hold that up for the camera, if, if you don't mind? Wait a minute. Hold it. There it is right there, the golden dragon. That is something that... And they say you... Uh, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. They say, what was it? They, they gave it my... They went, here, the, being a low, low, low life landlubber and a slimy polywog, failing to obey orders on a crusty shellback, calling a swab a mop. <laughs> <laughs> so after you uh, 
you were escorting the ammunition ship. Where did you go? We came back to uh, Pearl Harbor, and then we were assigned to uh, go down to Anawetak and the Marshalls. We had a couple islands there, and then we were. Uh, wait a minute. And then we came back to Pearl Harbor again and met the fleet and went on to the Marianas. And the Marianas, uh, we were, as you can see, were the first ship in, D minus one. And it was one hell of a riot, I tell you. I never knew a young fellow who, only 18, 19 years old, got out of school and come back up, I mean. I was scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's something. What did your ship do? Uh, like close support or? We brought, on D minus one, we brought the frogmen in, or the Navy SEALs, into Saipan. And we covered them as they landed. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I think we, I don't know how many rounds of ammunition we put up, but we put up a hell of a lot of Really something. Were you fired at from shore batteries? Yeah, gee, my God. It was very fortunate that uh, the metal held up. The bullets were bouncing off the ship. Hmm. I, I, I can't explain it. Were there any uh, <coughs> casualties on board no ship? No casualties. Wait a minute. No, there are no casualties, I no. But after that, in Saipan, one of the boat fellows who stepped out of the gun mount hit in the shoulder with a, with a bullet hmm. from the enemy going up the channel. The only casualty we had then, but in Pele, though, where the ship got hit, we hit a, uh, tell you call those things? Oh, a mine. mine. We were blasting mines out of the water and we are on patrol. Mm -hmm. How bad was the ship damaged? Well, the ship was damaged. We lost three people, 20 some were killed. And the ship only was down, and six inches, if the, the mine hit six inches back further, would hit the, uh, uh, an ammunition, what do you call it? Powder magazine? Powder magazine. Mm -hmm. Miss, missed it by six inches. Oh. Ship went up in the air and it came down. Now, where were you when this happened? I was on a fantail. I was a seaman first. I was a seaman. I was going up for a coxswain, but that's beside the point. And we were doing some work back there. My buddy and myself. And that thing went up. We went up, up in the air and we come down. Boy, we come down hard. Happened on September 16th, I think it was. September 16th, if I remember correctly. And after that, I was transferred off. Now, before we get you transferring, you mentioned here on this one sheet that you had credit with sub sinking a submarine? Yeah. Off uh, Rota. I think it was Rota. Yeah, we uh, got a call. We, <laughs> geez. The submarine was in the studio, so two of the stories went up. And we went to the cove up to the island. We spot, we, uh, we got the bang. We dropped up charges. And when we hit that submarine, our whole fantail of our ship went right up in the air and come down again. Hmm. We hit it direct. And then there's all such junk come up from that submarine all my life. Like a black gusher coming out of the water. And it was only confirmed after the war was over that we got it. Mm -hmm. But it was something to see, believe me. Hmm. Now, after the ship was hit with a mine, obviously you went back someplace for repair before you no, got no, transferred? No, the ship was stayed there, and they transferred half of us off, and they brought it back to Pearl Harbor, and they brought it back to the West Coast for final fixing. Okay. It was in bad shape. The engine room was shot, like they say. I don't know. Now, what kind of uh, vessel were you transferred to? Oh, you had to bring that up. 
I was transferred, I went back to Manus Island. That was a good deal. A little while after, after though, this is really something. We were there two days on the island there, waiting to go home. <laughs> and one night, uh, an officer came in and said, Fellas, we're giving you guys guns. What the hell I want a gun for? Well, there's Japs up and around the, the base here, we got to get them. I'm in the Navy, I'm not in the Army. We need you to help out. In case we spot them, I want you to shoot, that's all. I'm patrol for one night. <laughs> we found a couple, boy, oh, the, the poor Jap didn't have a chance. They saw a Jap there, everyone turned a gun on him, and he was riddled with bullets, he didn't have a chance. <laughs> so after that day, I was assigned to the USS LSM number 36. Landing ship medium. It must have been quite a change from a destroyer. <laughs> well, I was, the reason why we should have went home, but the Admiral said we needed experienced men. Because these, the LSMs are coming back just from the states, stateside. So I was assigned to the, I was a deck force and I knew a lot about it. So I was putting on the deck, securing vehicles, and help it out the best way possible. So we went from there through the Philippines. We made about 15 landings in the Philippines. And every landing we had, we had always gunfire, of course. And the last landing I had aboard that ship was number 16 was on the island of Borneo, Balikapapan. And since we were a float flotilla leader, the skipper of the flotilla was aboard. I went down to him and I said, Sir, I want to ask you a question. What's that? I says, I'm on my 20th month. I'd like to go home. No, 19th month, I'd like to go home. You can. Get your gear together. Next port call, you're on your way home. What was it like on a LSM after being on a destroyer? Uh, well, LSM... Where did you stay and what were the living conditions like? The living conditions was crowded. Your quarters was up, down below the well deck. And when you get up like this, you could touch the top of the overhead. I got bunks. Wow, not quarters. <laughs> And the uh, living conditions was, well, I think better. It's not like the modern Navy now, they get everything. How was the food? Food was, uh, it, it was eatable, uh, better than it was aboard the Wadley. Wadley and Pearl Pearl. Hmm. The food was good, and the medical advice was uh, we a doctor on board because we were a battalion leader, and we had pretty good equipment aboard the ship. How many in the crew? I don't actually know. About mm -hmm. 92, I think, was in the crew. Mm -hmm. I don't have a picture of uh, those knuckleheads here at all. I don't know. Did you have any entertainment, like movies or anything like that, aboard ship? Ah! <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> no? No. Well, I really made that. I don't know. Oh. No USO shows or anything come aboard? The only thing I saw, and I got a real kick at one of the, where, what ship was it? Board of, Board one ship, I think it was a, the LSM 36. Bob Hope and Jerry Colonna should show up and out, out there. So they're all waiting, all of a sudden the guy comes up, sorry they couldn't make it. So I never, mm. <laughs> never <No>. seen it. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make it. That was the Manus Island. And Manus Island had a good move, one movie I've seen. The movie was way, way out. Jesus, it's hard to hear it. And you saw him on blogs. Or best buddy ever, you had to sit down. That was your movie. Mm -hmm. Had to rough it up, I tell you. <laughs> But to go back one step further, they asked, the U.S. made someone ask me, what was the most memorable moment you ever had in the service? 
quite a few of them. The most horrible moment I ever had in the service was aboard the Wadley when my buddy Hoffman was buried at sea. Boy, it hurt me very much. And that most horrible moment was in the Philippines. Between Langang Gulf and Manila, we pulled into the beach. And there on the beach was a ship, the L-10. And it was a, a field hospital. And we looked at it, and there were the people being worked on and bleeding outside in the tent. And they're working fearlessly. And also, I saw a guy come out and show things on top of the guys that are already dead. Mm. And on the other wing, I saw the guy pick out the guy and throw him in the, in the wing there. So, with curiosity, was in, I was on the landing party. Then I walked over the stairs. What, what are you putting him in there for? Let's take a look. There was about a hundred dead bodies packed on top of one another, waiting to be buried. I asked the Corbin what this is. He says, he says, sailor, I can't keep up with them. That's a memorial, boy. How do you think about that all the time? Mm -hmm. and the most happiest moment was, believe it or not, I thought it was happy anyway, I saw one of the seven wonders of the world, the Southern Cross, mm -hmm. off in New Guinea, the big cross of our order. You said one of the most interesting things you wrote here is a priest saying a mass. Yes, that was another one. That was another one. It was in the Philippines. I don't know what island was? I don't remember. He said he was up on the top of a two jeeps with a board across, and the priest was saying the mass. And it was all army and navy. And that island. You hear the bombs going up, way up the river. But you hear a pin drop. And the priest was saying mass. And if you're Catholic, he said to uh, he received he received the host the holy communion. And he got old oh, a couple hours after that he says, I'm sorry we ran out of communion. I just have to bless you. God bless you and may God take care of you. But to see all those men, full blown men like myself crying. Really something. They say uh, that's when you get your religion, and that's when you appreciate life. That's when I appreciate it the most. People don't understand uh, our wars. They should stay the hell out of the war, but you gotta go to it. That's what I figure. Now, you also mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, while you were in the uh, LSM that you had to take prisoners of war. Oh, gee. Yes. Since I was an old timer, I you know there they said to be the chief boatman. How old were you as an old timer? <laughs> well, I went in at nineteen. I came back at twenty-one. As an old time sailor, mm -hmm. so uh, the chief said to me, "Hank, I got a job for you. What's that?" He said, "We got to all those chaps up there. You got, will you mind right gun duty, watching them? I'll give you the twelve to four. So, uh, yeah, but be careful, they're slimy guys. Give me the goddamn gun, that's all. So I'm sitting there, and they start whispering among them. I, you, where? You wouldn't, you wouldn't move. I cocked the gun, I move. He moved. When he heard me, and all of a sudden, one asshole said, he cocked the gun out of, out of the Japs. So, one of the officers gone, what do you mean, cocked the gun? He wouldn't stop talking, and they whispering and looking, pointing at me. He did a good job, but I'm going to take you up. I figure you might kill one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. A son of a bitch ever did. Hey, it's my life or him, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way I figure. I'll figure that to this day. So when did you go back to the States? I left uh, July of uh, 44. Oh, July of 45, I got on Amy Lowell, a, a friend.
friendship. That was fair. You know those big well holes in, the, in, 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 the, in them? Mm -hmm. We slept in them on the way back. And we had living conditions were terrific. We slept in the hole and we had K rations. That's how we get to come back to the States. No hot meals, just K rations? Just K rations. Hmm. And uh, took, we left, uh, I forget what the hell time we left. It took us 30 days to go back anyway. From uh, Fire Island, it took us 30 days to get home. Three knots, four and two months, knots in reverse. And the whole freighter came to get home. The only hot meal I had, I went up to, I had one hot meal, two hot eggs. I, I, the colored fellow was a chef cook there on a ship. I says, I got two bucks, I want two eggs. He, gave, he took the two bucks, two dollars, and he gave me two eggs. Hot soft boiled eggs. That was at the extent of my hot meals. Hmm. I remember this day. Now, where were you when uh, you, you heard about the atomic bombs being dropped? I heard, I don't know what I heard. The only thing I remember most vividly was an old Navy man, he's a chief, uh, first class boatswain mate. And he's uh, my gun crew captain. Was, we call him Trigger McCarthy. He was an old timer. They called to him one day, I man back again. Hank, guess what? The bastard finally died. Who was that? FDR. He said, the war's going to be over. Who was it for that? You know, they claim about uh, different things, and this bothers me the most. Maybe you don't realize it, but I do. They blame George Bush for Iraq. They blame George Bush for all the prisoners of war. Shot. What about FDR? He wasn't blamed for the war. He was at the Admiral and the General take this. He's the Commander in Chief. He should have been charged with it, but he wasn't. Truman? What about Truman? He wasn't. The war wasn't his war in Korea. That was it. Johnson? The poor guys in Vietnam were took out shit and beaten, and they didn't work like him when they come back. That pissed me off. Johnson didn't get no, but, but they could charge George Bush with the Iraqi War. That was another thing. They bombed our homeland, didn't they? Iraq people or uh, Qatar bombed our homeland. The Vietnam, they didn't bomb us at all. Korea, they didn't bomb us. Nothing. And World War II, was, uh, when I say about the conditions over there, what caused this all, well, how come that we weren't up more alert? Commander in Chief should know more about that. What about our Secretary of Defense? They were the ones that gapped the law, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, after you uh, left the service, did you make use of the GI Bill at all? Yes, I did. I went to college, the GI Bill, with the two years only business college, and I took the veteran's loan to build my house. House I'm still living in this day. Hmm. Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? I'm in VFW. Mm -hmm. and I'm also in uh, Catholic Order at the Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Um, did you uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Well, we had reunions. We can't hear that up. Yes. Matter of fact, a fellow I met up in Sampson, Joe Millis, he's still alive yet. He lived down in uh, Sydney, in Sydney, and he's still alive yet, and we went all through the service together. Hmm. And uh, another fellow lives in, uh, right up near me, his name is Chuck McCauley. He was in the outboard of body with me. But we had reunions, and we had a, good, a couple of good reunions. One reunion was 1993, we went to um, Bermuda. Hmm. Anniversary of our shakedown, Bermuda. In 94, we went down to Melbourne. I saw a space shuttle go off. 
I was less, even we had less you bringing, I could go to anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because when you get on your years, you can't bring around a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The high prices kill you. Yeah. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, I'll tell you, it made me uh, more appreciative of life. The most thing that really happened to me when I got discharged, I had a nervous stomach. I reported it to the doctors, and the guys, the doctor said to me, a very nice doctor. I remember, I don't remember his name. I said, I think I should have my stomach get checked. The doctor looked at me and says, Hank, you're like a son to me, just looking at me as young. He said, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. And he says, I want you to take your troubled stomach and go home. Let your doctor look at it. Because you, if you go in there now, you'll be a guinea pig. Mm. So I went home. My doctor took care of me. Here I am. Because I never heard so much stories about when you get discharged, those hospitals were horrible. Because they had so much to do, they couldn't handle it all. Mm -hmm. To this day, I still go to my own doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, you have some photographs of yourself in uniform? Oh, oh yes, I'm old truth that I am. Well, they got a lot of pictures of fellas who were aboard ship going through the Panama Canal. Thanksgiving Day, oh, what? November 23rd, 1943, Thanksgiving, Board of Order. Give, give us a card, aren't they nice? <laughs> <clears throat> and there's the, there's the LSM-36. Could you hold that up? <laughs> now, is that your destroyer on the other page? That's the destroyer uh, after I left. It's not the, the current, it's not the current one, but it's just... Mm -hmm. And there's the living conditions aboard. LSM. <laughs> Just take a look at them. Mm -hmm. Could you turn that up to the camera if you don't mind, please? I don't mind. No, no, no. Ah! I'm getting old. Sorry, I'm so, so slow. You, don't, you can just hold it back. He can focus okay, on it. Okay, good, good, good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got the destroyer. And, uh... The LSM, that's pretty hard, yeah. Okay. And then down below is where I used the crew quarters. Oh boy. All your new Navy ships now we have air conditioning. Yeah. yeah. Must have been really hot inside of those ships. Over okay. in the Pacific during World War okay. II. I used to sleep on the deck. Mm -hmm. Now you, I think that page is sticking out. But that one there? Uh, oh, one page. Further yeah. back you have yeah. the pictures of yourself. Yeah, 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 wait, wait, yeah. Take a look at me. Double, double exposure. Jerk plus jerk. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know when, when or where that was taken? Do that picture? I know where it was taken. From San Francisco. Is that on your return home? Uh, before I get home. Mm -hmm. I have my hair cut. <laughs> okay, and you said there was one on the back of that, too? One on the back of with my buddy. Okay. Joe Millis. That was taken in... Can, can, can you just angle that back a little? I'm getting uh, glare off the, now, the plastic. Like that? oh, that's good. That's good. Just like that. Yeah, I just have uh, my buddy, his daughter just called me up. He has uh, kidney cancer. Oh. I'd love okay. to go to see him, but that, how far is Sydney from Longley? Sydney is down towards Binghamton, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. That must be about 60, 70, 80 miles. Yeah, probably yeah. A, an hour, to an hour and a half or so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Is that all you need now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, now, 